The Manila Light Rail Transit System Line 1 is the first metro line of the Manila Light Rail Transit System. Presently, the line contains 20 stations and runs on 19.65 kilometers, 12.21 miles of fully elevated route. The line is colored yellow, old, and green, new, on all LRT maps. The line runs in a general north-south direction from Baclaran to Monumento, then, it runs in an east-west direction from Monumento to North Avenue, linking the cities of Quezon City, Caloocan, Manila, Pasay, and Parañaque. Passengers can transfer to the Line 2 at Doroteo Jose Station, while passengers can transfer to the Line 3 at EDSA and North Avenue stations. The Line 1 was known for many names such as LRT Line 1, shortened to LRT 1, Yellow Line, Green Line 2012, or the Metrorail. However, the yellow color of the line dates back to its opening in 1984. On October 12, 2014, Light Rail Manila Corporation LRMC, a joint venture company of Metro Pacific's Metro Pacific Light Rail Corporation MPLRC, Ayala Corporation's AC Infrastructure Holdings Corporation AC Infra, and the Philippine Investment Alliance for Infrastructure's Macquarie Infrastructure Holdings Philippines Private Limited MIHPL, signed a concession agreement with the Department of Transportation DOTR, and Light Rail Transit Authority LRTA, for the operation and maintenance of LRT Line 1 and the construction of a PHP 65 billion extension project to Bacor, Cavite. LRMC, in turn, contracted the operation and maintenance of the line for 20 years to RATP Dev under its subsidiary RATP Dev Trans Dev Asia, a joint venture between Trans Dev and RATP Dev. The 32 year concession started on September 12, 2015. History December 1, 1984, Baclaran into Central Terminal May 12, 1985, Corrido to Monumento March 22, 2010, Balintawak October 22, 2010, Roosevelt Technical specifications Name, Manila Light Rail Transit System Line 1 Concession holder, Light Rail Manila Corporation Operator, Light Rail Manila Corporation Length, 19.65 km plus 11.7 km Cavite Extension Concession starting date, 2015 Concession ending date, 2047 Stations, 20 plus 8 Cavite Extension Route The Line 1 is predominantly aligned to the path of Taft Avenue, Radial Road 2, which was chosen largely due to its straight length. Later on, as Taft Avenue ends, it shifts to Rizal Avenue and Rizal Avenue Extension, Radial Road 9, then turning right at EDSA or Circumferential Road 4, C4 Road, before ending at the corner of North and West Avenues and EDSA. Stations Manila Light Rail Transit System Line 1 serves 20 stations along its route. A 21st station is yet to be constructed. Eight stations, which are part of the LRT-1 South Extension Project, are also set to be constructed south of Baclaran. A previously proposed station, Malvar Station in Caloocan, was proposed during the construction of the Northern Extension, and became a bargaining object during its construction, and has since been shelved by the current administration. Rolling stock The LRT Line 1 at various stages in its history has used a two-car, three-car, and four-car trainsets. The two-car trains are the original first-generation BN and ACEC trains, railway cars numbered from 1,000. Most were transformed into three-car trains, although some two-car trains remain in service. The four-car trains are the more modern second-generation Hyundai Precision and Adtrans 1100 and third-generation Kinki Shario, Nippon Shario 1200 trains. There are 139 railway cars grouped into 40 trains serving the line, 63 of these are first-generation cars, 28 second-generation, and 48 third-generation. One train car 1037, was severely damaged in the Rizal Day bombings and was subsequently decommissioned. 
The maximum speed of these cars is 80 km per hour, 50 miles per hour. The LRT Line 1 fleet is being modernized to cope with increasing numbers of passengers. In the initial phase of its capacity expansion program completed in 1999, the Line 7 four-car second-generation trains were commissioned providing an increased train capacity of 1,350 passengers while the original two-car trains capable of holding 748 passengers were transformed into three-car trains with room for 1,122. The acquisition marked the introduction of the first air-conditioned trains to the line. Earlier LRT Line 1 rolling stock was notorious for its lack of air conditioning, relying instead on forced air roof ventilation for cooling. Unfortunately, this resulted in hot and stuffy rides. The problem was addressed more fully after a preparatory rehabilitation program completed in 2001 allowed the installation of air conditioners to the older rolling stock. By June 2004, all Yellow Line trains had air conditioning. As part of the second phase of expansion on the Yellow Line, 12 new trains made in Japan by Kinki Shario and provided by the Manila Trend Consortium were shipped in the third quarter of 2006 and went into service in the first quarter of 2007. The new air conditioned trains have boosted the capacity of the line from 27,000 to 40,000 passengers per hour per direction. As of recent, the original train sets are undergoing a body repaint and repair to address body issues and put it at par with its newer trains in terms of aesthetics. However, a majority of the second generation trains are currently not operational due to various issues such as air conditioning and propulsion issues, now a subject of an extensive rehabilitation program. Four of the coaches in the third generation trains currently out of service is most likely the train set that figured in the train collision in Roosevelt Station. LRMC has also built an in-house laboratory for production, manufacturing, fabrication and repair of train parts that are no longer available in the market. A new rolling stock is awarded to the Mitsubishi Corporation and manufacturing partner CAF, together with Jika valued at P64.9 billion for 120 cars, or 30 train sets, to the LRT-1, in order to cover its Cavite extension, and able to service more passengers. The train sets will be delivered from 2020 to 2022. Plans South Extension Phase 1, LRT-1 Extension, a South Extension of Line 1, also known as the South Extension Project or the Cavite Extension Project in the Metro Manila Rail Plans has been proposed and would aim to serve the areas of Parañaque to Cavite. Such an extension would take Quirino Avenue, road from Parañaque to Bacor, then would travel on the side of Seaside Drive to the Coastal Road, and from there would travel down the side of Cabihasnan Street to Quirino Avenue, again, to its extension, General Emilio Aguinaldo Avenue from the Las Piñas Bacor boundary of Zapote Bridge to NIOG. The extension would add eight stations over some 11.7 kilometers 7.3 miles of new line and would be the second rail line extending outside the Metro Manila area, after the under-construction MRT Line 7. An unsolicited bid to conduct this work from Canada's SNC Lavalin was rejected by the Philippine government in 2005. In 2006, the government worked with advisors, International Finance Corporation, White and Case, Halcro and others, to conduct an open market invitation to tender for the extension and for a 30-year concession to run the extended LRT-1 line. President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo subsequently withdrew the project. The South Extension project will be done in phases. Phase 1 will start from Dr. A. Santos Avenue towards Redemptorist Road in Baclaran. Phase 2 will start from Dr. A. Santos Avenue towards NIOG. The LRT-1 South Extension Project will consist of the following eight stations. Redemptorist Station, Parañaque Manila International Airport Station, Parañaque Asia World Station, Parañaque Ninoy Aquino Station, Parañaque Dr. A. Santos Station, Parañaque Las Piñas Station, Las Piñas Zapote Station, along the boundaries of Bacor and Las Piñas NIOG Station, Bacor in May 4, 2017, the groundbreaking for the South Extension Project was held. DOTR Secretary Arthur Tugade projected the early completion of the project to be by 2020. The line would be extended from Parañaque southwards, connecting Las Piñas and Bacor to the LRT network. 
The actual construction will start by first quarter of 2019 once the right-of-way issues are substantially addressed. The extension from Baclaran to Dr. A. Santos Avenue is expected to be operational by third quarter of 2021. The extension will reach Bacor in Cavite and is expected to be finished by 2023. South Extension Phase 2, LRT 6 Another extension of the LRT 1 in Cavite has been proposed. It will be extended by another 19 kilometers 12 miles from Bacor to Desmarinas with a right-of-way alignment along Aguinaldo Highway. This public-private partnership project dubbed as LRT-6 would have six additional stations in Cavite. The six stations of the proposed South Extension Phase 2 are composed of Torona Station, Bacor Imus Station, Imus Dong Hari Station, Imus Salatran Station, Desmarinas Congressional Avenue Station, Desmarinas Governor's Drive Station, Desmarinas Incidents and accidents Terrorism Rizal Day bombings on Rizal Day in the year 2000, a yellow line train, car number 1037, exploded near Blumentritt Station as part of a series of explosions in a terrorist attack known as the Rizal Day bombings. The attack on the LRT killed some 22 people and injured hundreds. Eight members of both Jama'a Islamiyah and the Moro Islamic Liberation Front MILF, which include Hamble, Asia's Most Wanted Man, and Father Rahman al Ghazi, were charged with plotting and masterminding the attacks in 2003, some three years after the attacks. Three suspects were put on trial, with al Ghazi receiving 17 years in prison due to the illegal possession of explosives. al Ghazi later died in a firefight after attempting to escape from prison. Car number 1037 is currently decommissioned, but there are plans to reconstruct it. Suicides and births LRT Line 1 also witnessed several cases of suicides and suicide attempts, including one case involving a fisherman, who soon died, a 41-year-old woman, who survived, and a man, who jumped from the 26th floor of a condominium building and was subsequently crushed by a southbound LRT train. The line also witnessed births involving women who were heading towards hospitals accessible through the LRT, and the first case recorded occurred on May 5, 2005, involving a woman named Lee Aquino Ababa, from Pase. Fires Fires, mostly occurring near the line, also caused service disruptions on the LRT Line 1 on several instances. Train operations from Central Terminal to Baclaran were temporarily suspended after a fire in a residential area in Pasay City forced the suspension of operations due to the proximity of one of the burning buildings to Libertad Station. Operations from Central Terminal to Monumento still operated as scheduled. Full service was restored after the fire was controlled. Train operations to and from Baclaran were suspended because of a fire at the Baclaran Galleria shopping mall that started at around 5 a.m. Until noontime the fire was still spreading to nearby establishments, and flames even started to encroach entrance of the station. Earlier the station had to be closed because of the thick smoke coming from the fire. Train operations were limited from Monumento to Gil Puyat when fire broke out in a four-story pure gold commercial building beside Libertad Station at around 2 a.m. Normal operations resumed in the afternoon after the fire was controlled. Train malfunctions Unlike the MRT-3 that has been virtually crippled due to poor maintenance, the LRT-1 has seldom trained malfunctions and has been mostly functional, however, occasional malfunctions such as line glitches limiting station travels, train malfunctions such as train doors being open while running, code yellow, and code red, cases where whole trainsets bogged down in the middle of a revenue run have been reported sporadically. See also References External links The LRT Line 1 System 
Light Rail Manila Corporation. 